Peter Guber, the author, fascinating new book, Tell to Win, uh, Connect, Persuade, and Triumph with the Hidden Power of Story. Peter, why did you invest 18 months or two years of your life in writing a book about the power of story? Well, I actually invested 40 years of my life in it because what it was, I, I didn't know for the first 37 years what that power was that I was even using for movies or television or music or sports. I never realized what it was. It was storytelling. In any event you're in, if you're in sports, it's storytelling, new media, it's storytelling. But I realized at one particular moment that there was a magic in reversing it, being a little dyslexic, calling it telling purposeful stories, that that was the secret sauce to engage other folks in your mission, to, to get them to pick up the cudgel, to buy your product, to become a, a, a sponsor, to become an investor, to participate in your company, to vote for you, whatever you want one or a whole bunch of ones to do, you have to find a way to ignite them. You have to find a way to engage them. And what I realized was that telling purposeful stories was the way we're wired. It's the way we're designed. It was no gift. You know, it was a gift by God to me and you and everybody, but we all have it. And then I began a sense of a detective story, looking and saying, how come we have it? And how do we unlock and unleash its benefits for everybody? And it was so easy that I, at one point, thought to myself, huh, why don't more people understand it, realize it, and use it? Because most of the folks think it's soft stuff. You abandon it when you're 8 or 9 or 10 years old. You abandon telling your kid it when he's 11 or 12. No more stories, Dad. And you, you begin to think that it's dismissive. You're dismissive of it. And the rea reality is we got 99,900 years of training in that and about one nanosecond with digital and one millisecond with printed word. If you think it, my dad is, died at 96 and my aunt's 105 today. And four of those lifetimes, we get back to a point there was no written word. I mean, there was written word, but only eight people read and only two people wrote it. So it's only in the last millisecond that we have that technology that took us from the oral connection to the written one. And like, what was that? To electronic media, let alone digital, you know, connections. So what is so powerful is that there is a whole transmission of energy and values and propositions that gets accomplished when somebody's in the room like we are, face to face, breathing the same air, in charge of our, each of our beings, and you're exchanging precious bodily energy. And I think that that is something that has been underutilized, undertaught for sure, that I can speak to, undertaught, and undervalued in the business community, in the social community, even though we know it because we're all story listeners, even though we elect presidents of them, we listen to the news, we love movies, we read books, we listen to news shows, they're all stories. Stories you know, are the way we make sense of our lives. So the idea of use that energy, use that power that's inside you to unlock what you want with other folks. There's going to be a lot of people watching this show who don't know how to tell stories, perhaps an entrepreneur, an artist, uh, investors. What advice would you give them, apart, of course, from reading your book? I would say to them, you, do, you are a story listener. If you have e two ears and an eyes and nose and breathe, you are a story listener. You consume them, those atoms, every single day in your life. You know, that's the way we make sense of our life. We look, what's the story here? Tell me, what, what's that about? You, you, you ask them to give you the narrative. You beg for them to give the narrative. I can't remember the facts. Tell me, what, what's the story? You're always doing it. And so if you're always doing it, you already have that quality of recognition. You have it inside yourself. All you do is just turn it around. Just turn it around. And recognize that there's something special about that quality. There's something really unique about it. And that when things really matter, when the chips are down, when you really want to get that customer, client, patron, when you really want to get that person to join your company, when you really want to energize them to follow the course of action, your strategy, you've got to get in the room face to face and breathe the same air. You know it, I know it, you tell anybody that they'll do it. Even the shyest person, they may not like to. But here's the secret. The secret is that the tools exist inside of you, not inside of me. There's no gift from me to you in that book or anything. It's inside of you. And all you have to recognize is, hey, wait a minute. I don't know if you're, are you a golfer? 
I hate golf. I hate golf too. It's like watching paint dry. It's but the, the point is, there's only one worse thing than golf. No, I won't tell. Don't tell me. But I'm going to ask you a question. But you know how it works, right? I mean, you do know how golf works. Yeah, you have a ball and a bunch of clubs, right, and you try right, to put the ball in the hole, right. and you try to get do it in fewer and fewer number of yeah, strokes, yeah, yeah. right? So if you were a golfer, and I said to you, tell you what, forget your clubs. Forget the. Light. I could take ten strokes off your game. I'll know. You can take ten strokes off your game. I'm going to show you how you can do it in a couple of hours. You'd have a line all the way across San Francisco, all the way down to Los Angeles, probably to Baja, Mexico. And people would say, I'll take that. Well, that's what this is. The idea is it's just a set of recognition of techniques that you are already receiving and using and recognizing and using them and turning them around as a tool for you. Why would you want to putt with the long end of the putt, little point of the putt? You'd want to use the blade. Why, would you, 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 why not use the tools correctly? So, for example, 70 or 80% of telling a purposeful story is telling, then there's the story. If you can't tell it, you can't sell it. So the idea is, what does that mean? It means the techniques of communication, of engagement, are, have nothing to do with an art form. Nothing. Zero. Not even recognize where the narrative or where the story is. It has to do with you, which is beautiful. Think of it this way. When you go into a room, here's one, one thought, it's one technique. When you go into a room and you're going to try to convince somebody to join your company, you're going to try to get the job, you're going to try to get a raise on Monday, you're going to try to sell your product, you're going to try to get a customer, you're going to try to get a partner, an investor, you're going to try somebody to join your church, whatever you want, one or many people. When you walk in that room, do you realize you're already telling your story before you speak your first word? Because you look at that person. You see whether they're congruent, authentic. Is it shining through? You see, their, you see their intensity. You see who they are and what they are before they speak the words. Words were invented after people. They didn't have, there were a lot of words and then we formed people. There were people and then we formed words. Why did we form words? Language, there was a reason, an evolutionary reason. Because look at us, we're not as big as an elephant, we're not as tough as a rhinoceros, we're not as fast as a cheetah. How do we get from the bottom of the food chain to the top? How do we get from, Completely being prey on this planet to being predator. Bad, but still predator. Why? Well, we organize ourselves. Social cohesion. Listen, let me disabuse everybody. Social cohesion and social network wasn't made by Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn. Those are only effects of it. Those are only utilizations of it. Social cohesion came because that's the way we organize ourselves to pass along the rules, values, beliefs, all the religions of our tribes to each other. We wouldn't remember it without that. There was no written word. We had to create tactics and strategy. We had to work together. That's what language allowed us to do. But for eons, the distance of geography, temporal, the temporal elements, once you said it, it was, it was gone. And if you had wisdom, unless it was passed along orally, it was gone. And the printed word allowed, changed it both in time and space. Technology changed it time and space. And the technology is changing it faster and faster. All of the state-of-the-art technologies are doing that. But you know what they're in service of? State-of-the-heart technology. They're in service of doing what we're doing now. That's what they are. Otherwise, they're a cold comfort and don't work.